come back. Well, where have I been? Well, I haven't really been anywhere except to bed. <laughs> I had this incredibly bad, uh, this bad chest with bronchitis and all that sort of stuff. He put me out for weeks on end. Then I was waiting for bits to review. I got a whole plethora of reviews coming up and uh, yeah, some of which are over there. You might just see them, but don't worry. <laughs> oh my God, what we got here? Now listen, this is not my guitar. A friend of mine loaned it to me. I told him what to go and buy because he didn't want to spend a fortune. And he bought one of these. Bought it from uh, Music Store Pro in uh, Hanley, Stoke-on-Trent, England, as they say in America. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think he got a pretty good job. But anyway, enough about where he got it from, and it's his. We'll go one step at a time, as he often tells me. And uh, take a look at the case first. He bought this case separate. But it says on here, Gear 4 Music, which is a, a sort of retailer here in the UK. Uh, not a bad bunch of guys, really, I suppose. But they are good for this, because this case cost about £40, he tells me. That's about $55 today. Uh, I'm telling you now. Well, he hasn't ever seen a crocodile in real life, or even a gator. Could be a gator. No, it's a croc. He hasn't seen one of them. It's a plastic croc. <laughs> it does look particularly good. It's even been sort of shaded in the right areas. Bit like me, I'm shady in the right areas. Anyway, enough of this frivolousness. Let's get on with it and uh, I'm gonna flip the lid so you can have a look. What about that? Yeah, let's do that now. Uh, this will be a pretty uh, pretty good review, I think. Because I know what's coming. <laughs> yeah, that should do it. Yeah. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> now then. Well, it looks like a Les Paul. It uh, plays like a Les Paul. It feels like a Les Paul. It well could be. Anyway, it's a bit like the uh, Jimmy Page Les Paul. Remember that? I don't know if you do. So that's a Gibson. Gibson Jimmy Page Les Paul. Made those in 96, but this one looks surprisingly similar. So I think what we'll do... Uh, as we move forward, we'll take a look at this and we'll compare it with a Gibson Jimmy Page 1996 Les Paul. Now that should be interesting. Hold on. Well, here it is. Oh my God. This looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Yeah, I could call that a, a Gibson Les Paul, couldn't you? The only thing is, it isn't. It isn't a Gibson Les Paul. You know, often I get uh, moaned at sometimes. Well, not often. Yeah, you, di you didn't review enough cheap guitars. They call them cheap, but they're not cheap. Uh, this one, by the way, was about... By the time you get the discounts and everything out the way, it was about £450 or about $625. Not bad. I wonder what it's really like. But we'll get to that. Well, what make is it? Well, it's an Epiphone. There it is. It's an Epiphone, it says here, a Les Paul Standard Pro, Les Paul model, it's all there. The only real differences you can see are the shape of the headstock and the fact that it says Les Paul Pro. That's about it. Everything else looks, uh, looks pretty cool to me. Oh, these even turn. What about that? <laughs> so, what I want to do is... Uh, yeah, get the guitar out that we're going to compare it with and I'll put it at the side and we can flip as we go. That's a good idea. It's a little bit unfair comparing it exactly with a Jimmy Page Les Paul, but what I wanted to do was to show you how near this guitar actually gets for its money to the real deal, that is. Yeah, let me go and get it. Hold on. Well, here we are. Epiphone Standard Pro Gibson Les Paul Jimmy Page 1995 You can see this sort of similar This one's sort of fading Slightly different It's more of a honey burst I would call this one What would I call that? I don't know Tell me what you think Yeah It's a nice 
finish. Let me just remind you of this one. Yeah, sort of similar. In fact, quite similar, but not the same. So let's zoom in close. Let's bring these down a bit and we can see what we actually get for the money and uh, see what this one's really like. Oh, and by the way, at the end, what we're going to be doing is playing both of them. So we'll play this one, then we'll play this one. And all you guys that love Chinese guitars have told me that this one's better than this one. That's okay. <laughs> you have your view and I have mine. But don't worry about that. So let's zoom in. Hold on. Okay, well, here we go. As you can see, the uh, this is the Epiphone. Uh, close up. Very nice finish on the top. Very well matched. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's very, very good. You can see across these down here that these are pretty, pretty good, actually. We've got the usual four pots. Actually, pretty similar to the Jimmy Page. I think it's almost meant to be a sort of Jimmy Page copy, this. I don't know. We'll get to that. You'll notice on here that uh, the sort of characters on it are a bit dark. You can't always make out where they are. You know where four is and you know where flat out is. And the edges are very sharp too, around here. But they've got the see-through bit in the top. Yeah? And you can also... Okay, well you can pull two of them, which I guess uh, splits these pickups uh, into single coils and things like that, you know, that sort of thing. I haven't really checked the spec, but I knew it did that. But we'll see about the Jimmy Page in a moment. I suppose you could do that and do that and have the thing in the middle and then you've got one split and one humbucker and you get the idea. That sort of thing. Okay, remember that. And remember the top. Taking a look at this piece here, You'll see that uh, that's a pretty standard tailpiece, stop tailpiece. When we get to the bridge, you've got sort of some of these backwards and some of these forwards, if you can see that. And I want you to remember that too, as well as uh, these little screw holes here. You can see them. You can put your screwdriver there and adjust the heights of the bridge. All nice and simple. Yeah. Moving on to the pickups. These, uh, these are the Epiphone uh, Burst Booker Pro. I'll, I'll guess that they're them. I didn't go and check again, but I'm pretty sure that's what you get on the Pro model. Burst Booker Pros. Or something similar, let's put it that way. Very similar. Yeah. You can take this off, indeed as most people do. My friend left it on. He'll learn. <laughs> but anyway, you can take that off so you can get rid of this code and... All the rest of it, mate. Looks nicer, doesn't it? What else we got down here? We'll flip bodies in a minute, by the way, and have a look at the old one. Well, we got the treble, middle, and rhythm. And, and this is a sort of uh, creamy sort of colour, as the pickup surrounds are. You'll get them. You've seen them before. These are pretty average, actually. That one looks quite reasonable. Yeah, they, they're pretty average uh, for the plastics. On the cover, that is. So let's flip this guitar for the other one. I'll take a quick look at that one. Well, here we are. I'm afraid I can't do much about the lights sticking down here. I want to put up with that, I'm afraid. That's just the way life is. Well, let's take a quick look, run through this one and do the comparison as we go. Uh, now, what you've got is you've still got the top that's a sort of figured top. It's pretty well figured as well. You've got a few dents on this one, very small dents. It was played a lot in its peak. It's got uh, the four volume and tone, just like the other one. But if you remember the other one, maybe I'll put a picture up there, so up there, up there somewhere, about these, so you can see the other ones. These ones are quite smooth around the edge, and it's like the centers are more defined on the other ones. They they sort of flat at the top, and these are more like a sort of oval. You look at that, so that's worth looking at. We've got uh, push pull, we're on all of them, so you can single coil split with these, 
but you can also reverse the polarities and things like that. I'm not going to go into great depths of it because it's not a review really of this guitar. I'm just showing you the differences. You'll notice the stock tailpiece. Well, this one's a gold one, but they're the same, basically. Well, when I say they're the same, they're similar because the actual mountings underneath are a different size. So if you was to take a bridge off this and put it onto the epiphone that's just over there, I'm afraid you're going to be having a few problems with that. Looking at the bridge, you'll notice, strangely, <laughs> or not, that you've got one, two, three, four facing that way and two facing this way. Now, some people on occasion have said to me, oh, tell me you've got some of these that are the wrong way round. But you noticed on the epiphone that they were the, well, they weren't the same because this one was reversed as well but they were sort of similar. So I don't think I've got anything wrong, the wrong way round, and I don't think the Epiphone's got anything the wrong way round. The only thing wrong way round is the guys that said it. <laughs> but there you go. Oh, who cares? You've got the similar plastics. These are more creamy than the other one. Everything else works the same, of course. I took the uh, scratch plate off. And the pickups can be split and all the rest of it. They're different than the burst buckers. I don't know what model they are. I think they were Jimmy Page's pickup. Well, you can go and check yourself. Who cares? It's not a review of this guitar. It's just a comparison. But notice that these are open humbuckers. And on the other one, they're covered. That's all there is to look at on this one for now. Let's go back to the Epiphone. See, the thing is, if you really blinked, you wouldn't know it had been swapped, would you? <laughs> well, there you go. What can I say? You notice the top of them, like I said. Uh, so, what else is different? Well, if you look down the end here, this is plastic. And on the Jimmy Page, it's not. It's metal. Just over there. Just over there somewhere. Now, what we've got here is the Epiphone neck. This is a pretty good neck, actually. You can see the join down there. We'll look at that later. But if you look at the frets, they're nice frets. They're well put on. You know, there's no sort of rough edges or anything like that. It's all been done properly. And if you look at the inserts as well, there's very little filling on the inserts, which is quite nice to see. And uh, yeah, if I if I'd have told you that this was the uh, Jimmy Page neck, well, some people would pick it up, but uh, most of them wouldn't. So. As far as the neck's concerned, yeah, looks pretty nice. It looks like rosewood. The inserts are nice. The, the frets are nice. What do you want for your money? <laughs> Let's move along a bit further. Well, actually, we'll put the Jimmy Page there first. Okay, well, here's the Jimmy Page neck. It's, you can see it's exceedingly similar. Uh, similar inserts. In fact, they look identical. <laughs> They're both plastic. Now then, but there's no uh, there's no filler on this one either, so looks like Gibson got that right. But do notice that at the end of the frets, that you've got the plastic that's been filed down in between the frets, and it leaves these little nibs. Now that's something that went away for a while. I'm not sure if it's ever come back. It might well have. But you can see that the the, the neck itself, it's. Its construction is very, very similar to the Epiphone. Well, the Epiphone is very similar to this. Take your pick. Let's move back to the Epiphone. Here we are down the, uh, the tuner end. Well, the headstock. Les Paul Standard Pro. It's a proper Les Paul model logo, which is nice. You know, don't get that on the cheap Chinese stuff unless it's a rip-off. Well, look at the look at the uh, nut. I see the nut looks to be like a plastic one, actually. Actually, I think it is a plastic one, but it's been finished very well. The headstock's probably black paint. On the real ones, it tends to be what they call Hollywood, not Hollywood, but Hollywood. <laughs> and Epiphone's on here, emblazoned at the top. I'm not sure whether that's done the same as a Gibson, but it. It's not the same material, so it looks like it's been uh, reverse screen printed. That does to me. This has probably been reverse screen printed as well. There's nothing on the top. The tuners, 
we'll come to when we turn over. But that's about it for the top up here. Uh, you've got your truss rod, you've got all the stuff. And, uh, you know, away you go. Let's take a look at the Jimmy Page one. So we've got this comparison again. Well, this one's just a standard. <laughs> the Epiphone's a standard pro, so I guess there's something better somewhere. Or is there? I don't know. Maybe it's a nameplate that's better. I don't know. Anyway, take a look at this one. You'll find, if you look at this one, well, is that a plastic knot? Well, I think it's one of those materials that's, uh, you know, slippy. So I think they used one of those type of things. It could be, I don't know, it could be bone. It's bone coloured. Let's put it that way. Particularly well set up. It's got a standard logo that you get. The Les Paul model logo here is basically identical to the Epiphone. Yeah, I would say it's identical. However, once you get up onto the name badge, it's very different. This one's been sunk into the top of the guitar with this mother of pearl, or mother of toilet seat, for somebody called. <laughs> uh, but what you've got, you can actually feel where it's been sunk in. And uh, that costs money to do that, I'll tell you now. There's no filler on it, there's nothing. The only thing about having it where it's sunk in like this, if you look really carefully down there, let's see if I can get a bit closer. There you go. You'll notice that it cracks, and that cracks through temperature changes. So, very common in Gibsons. The real ones, that is. On the Epiphone, as I said, it looks to me like reverse screen print. Far, far cheaper. <laughs> doesn't sound any better, but it doesn't say Gibson either. Okay, well, here we are at the back of the uh, Epiphone. You can tell by the shape of the neck. Well, what's special? Well, well, it's a neck. <laughs> it's made with, uh, looks to me like mahogany. Could be something else, some other woods that are very similar. Not a bad shaped neck either. Well, we'll come to that on the other one. Uh, these are sort of grovers, it says. Uh, it might be real Grovers, they might be a cheaper made Grover, who knows? They're not going to tell you any of that. Maybe they're the real deal. And if they are, great. It all adds to it, doesn't it? So you'd get good stability and tuning. Uh, you've got the usual, don't throw it in your bin. We've got an inspection QC. And it says here, handcrafted in China, which is where it, exactly where it's made. You'll notice it's... Uh, Got a little slither of wood there. You can see that. See down there. And uh, I can't really see one at the other side, so maybe they just topped out this side. Scarf joint right here. Notice where that is and what it's like. It's got an angle that's probably very similar to uh, the, uh, the Gibson. There's not much else I can say about that. It feels good. It's a nice, it's got a, it's got a distinct flat here on the neck. Well, I'll have a look at that when we get a bit further down. I'll probably try and compare both necks directly, you know. So let's get the other one and check it out. Okay, well, this is the Jimmy Page Les Paul. Uh, well, first off, I don't see a scarf joint. I don't think there is one on this guitar. That changes the cost of the guitar quite dramatically, although the results aren't particularly that different. Uh, the sounds are going to be pretty similar. It's just that it's constructed in, a, in a, a different way. Some would say better because of the resonance. Some others wouldn't. <laughs> We've got the Grover tuners on this one, which are Grover tuners, so, you know, a little bit, a little bit of a clean-up, really. They go a bit, uh, a bit dull over time, like that one has. I guess I can clean them. And the finishes, well, nice. This has got a little edge piece down here, and it's a little edge piece. Of careful, carefully with that side, you can see that too. So very nice neck. But the thing is, it doesn't actually go flat. Uh, one of the things about this neck, which I'll talk more about when we move down a bit, is is that this neck is pretty much unique on a Les Paul, uh, from my experience, and I've seen a lot of them. So, well, the Epiphone's flat here. This one has a very peculiar uh, profile. Let's go back to the Epiphone. 
Okay, well I've got these two guitars as near as I can get uh, to show you on the screen. The Epiphone's headstock's that away, and the Gibson's headstock is that away. So they are in reverse, remember that. We can see here, there's this, well maybe you can see, there's a, there's a flat here that runs basically very flat in the centre, all the way down. That actually reminds me a little like, it's, it's a bit like an uh, so it's a bit like an Ibanez neck, not as not as wide, but uh, it's got this flat, and a lot of the Ibanezes seem to be like that. On this one, what you get is a very specific profile, and there is no flat anywhere down that neck. Uh, they say they made this exactly the same profile as Jimmy Page's guitar, so they went and measured everything, and his guitar had been played for years and all that sort of stuff. But it is a very nice neck, and I can tell you that that neck there is probably. <laughs> one of the best playing uh, necks on a Gibson I've ever had, or nothing. This one's stained deeper, and this one's a lighter colour, but they're both very nice necks. There's no, no getting away from that. Uh, yeah, it's all good. Let's move on. Well, here we are back on the Epiphone, and you can see it's a, a piece of mahogany on the back. Let's look at the joint first. No, not that joint. This joint. <laughs> yeah. It's very similar to a Les Paul. And if you didn't know any better, you'd say, well, that's a Les Paul joint. And, and the profile here is the same. It's exactly the same. But in reality, it's not quite the same. It's very similar. And uh, as I said, if you didn't know any better, you could very easily be fooled with that one. But I always look at this profile here because... On all the copies that I've ever seen, I've never seen one with a, a proper profile there. That's a bit of a giveaway. Thankfully, on this guitar, I think I can say, is that if you look down here, it is one piece of wood. And often on the compatibles, or the ones that are copies, there's two pieces of wood. There's a piece of wood stuck there for this piece and the next down there. But on this one, it, uh, it is actually one piece of wood, which is nice to know. That's better manufacturing. It's better manufacturing than nearly all of the Chinese ones that I've seen. The plate here is well, a bit of a rough and ready plate. Let's go and look at the, uh, the neck on the other one. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see that profile there. But it is a different shape profile. This is also one piece of wood, as indeed the Epiphone is, so there's not much difference there. And the joint itself is not dissimilar at all, really. Uh, this is mahogany. This looks to be a one piece uh, of wood, whereas the other will come and have another closer look in a minute. So you look out for that when you're looking at all the guitars. You know, when people claim that they're a, a real Gibson, look for this profile here and try and relate to it because it really is different matter. Here we are back on the Epiphone. Now, this is a great looking body. And for the most part of it, everybody out there would say, oh, that's a one piece neck, uh, one piece body. So what a great, uh, great job they did. The only problem is, that's not the body. It's been veneered on the back. Not easy to see, but when you look down the end, down this way, on the end of the guitar, you can see that. And indeed, this body is actually comprising of one, two, three, four pieces of wood. Four pieces of wood that are all stuck together this way, and then they're veneered over the top of this very fine looking veneer. And it is very nice veneer, but that's exactly what it is. It's a composite body, okay? It is wood, but which wood? Well, it probably is mahogany, but it could be some other type of wood under there. It's hard to really know. They don't tell you, but they make it look like mahogany. And that's a key difference between this and uh, the Gibson. We'll go and look at the Gibson again now. Okay, we're back on the Jimmy Page. This is actually a one-piece body, and it is mahogany. 
And that's part of the thing of, you know, when you buy the more expensive guitars, you're getting guarantees of what it is and what it isn't. Um, this is a mahogany uh, body, uh, indeed, and mahogany neck. So that matters. People will say, all right, it doesn't matter that much, it doesn't affect the tone. Some people will tell you that it does affect the tone, and some people will tell you that it doesn't. Me, I think it does have an effect, but to what level, I don't know. Uh, there are other things, in my opinion, that have a far more dramatic effect than uh, just the piece of wood. Well, this is a shot inside the back of the Epiphone. This is the plate that came off, and you can see that it's not particularly shieldy, or anything like that. Here we are inside the back. There's no real shielding in the back either of this uh, guitar. It's nice enough finished, you can see. It's uh, machined well. It's a bit more rougher down in the bottom there, if you can see that. Well, it's not easy to see, but it's almost like grated out like this. Uh, you've got two push pulls. You've got a... These are the wires off the uh, pickups. And you've got a joining cable there, you can see. The pots are Jin Sung Korea. Whoever they are, there they are, two 500k pots. And as I said before, on here you've got a plastic plate. As you'll see on the back of this plate as well, there's no screening on there at all. And inside it's a rather different story. You can see that. I'm not sure how well you can see it. There are actually four of these uh, pots. Different style pots altogether. They've got these things on the top and off go the wires with the four coil splits and all the rest of it. Little capacitor down there. You can see that. And uh, not much else. There is screening in the bottom of this one, but not so much on the sides. There's a bit of screening around there. There. But in the bottom, it's black, so it's been screened. These were hand uh, wired at the time, by the way, on the uh, on the real Jimmy page, and this one's never been touched. Although it is actually, they say, well, I say, it's wired wrong from the original. It has this particular position that has a particularly nice sound in it, and uh, maybe you'll get to hear that later or not. I have no other guitar that sounds like that. So there's the inside of the uh, of the genuine beast, and the Epiphone isn't that dissimilar. Uh, it's probably wired very different, but you get the idea. Oh, one last thing, the screws are much smaller on the genuine guitar than they are on the Epiphone. So that, my friends, is a bit of a rundown of the Epiphone Les Paul. Standard Pro, it says. <laughs> Can't get that word wrong. Right, Standard Pro. Yeah, pretty cool guitar, especially for the money. That's the mo most important thing. For the cost, it's a, it's a pretty good deal. Especially if you bear in mind in England that the, the tax is 20%, uh, as it is across Europe. So Europeans get everywhere. Hopefully we can dump them soon. On the uh, Jimmy Page Les Paul, well, there are differences. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but does it justify? This one, God knows what the list price was in them days. But I can tell you, when I bought that, I paid £2,800. That was about probably $3,600 at the time, give or take. So, is the sort of $600 here and the $3,500 there worth the difference. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to actually play something. I don't know what, find something when we have there. Uh, I'll play the same thing on both guitars. And you make your mind up. I won't change any settings on the amp or anything else. I'll leave the guitars as they are. And we'll see what the differences are. See if one squeals or one doesn't or one this and one that. But one of the things I can't show you on the video is how it feels, how the guitar feels. And this neck is a very different neck than this neck. There is no question. 
And this neck is remains currently, I haven't really played this one, so maybe this will become my favourite neck. You never know. But that currently is my favourite neck, so... Of the two guitars, if they were the same price, <laughs> I'd have that one. But they're not the same price, so if I can't afford that one, I'd have this one. Which is the, the next best thing, I guess. Yeah. Very interesting review. Mr. Jones, you've got bits everywhere on this. I suppose I'll have to give you a bit of a clean-up later. Uh, yeah. He's like that. He's the same on his desk. <laughs> a couple of things just before I go where you see it being played and you can do the comparisons yourself. Uh, got a few reviews coming up. I've got uh, a Line 6 HX FX just over there. Out of sight. <laughs> I've got uh, a Presonus Fader Port 16 we're going to have a quick look at for the studio type of guys that are kicking around. I've got some one of those locks, string lock, uh, string locks, the strap locks uh, for your guitar, which are a different design than what you normally see. Those are interesting. What else have I got? Uh, oh, there's lots of other stuff. Let's get rid of that. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, there'll be more. I want to show you one more thing. <laughs> you know me, I do lots of different things and sometimes I'll, I'll buy a unit like this uh, Rupert Neve Bogner Wessex pedal. You've seen it. I've got a review of it somewhere there. And that pedal, it's a great sounding pedal actually for what it is. I bought it second hand. But the problem with this pedal, right from the offset, is this button here. You could hardly press. Indeed. Here it is. Now I can take this pet, this but this button here that came out of there, and I can't press it no matter how I try. Just trust me. Just it's really, really, really bad. Yeah, and fitted as standard by Bogner. I've got a cheap Chinese copy one here. But I actually fitted a full tone one, which you can buy for about $12 or $13. Perfect. Now listen, this would be a great pedal, as probably the others would, if Bogner could get off his behind and actually fit components that are not crap. I don't harp on often. That is absolutely awful when it comes out of the factory. And all the ones that are out there, you can go on the go and check on your forums and the rest of it. It's riddled with people complaining about that switch. And I can tell you now, Bogner don't give them monkeys. <laughs> so that's my gripe, and that's the downgrade of that. Well, it's upgraded again now, so it's probably back to an eight or nine. But yeah, if you haven't changed that, yeah, take it down to about a three. It's useless. Okay, on to the playing. Don't forget to check out TonyMcKenzie.com. Loads of stuff on there. A lot less than there should be. It's been bad. Uh, but there is a lot of stuff on there. And if you've never been, well, you should go. There's lots of different things that would interest a guitarist. And lots of reviews indeed. Uh, yeah, nothing else going on. That's it. Here's the music.